Buenos días, buenos días amigos y bienvenido, en, bienvenido a la ciudad de Gandía, a beautiful town in the northeast coast of um, Spain, which I discovered yesterday, right at the Mediterranean Sea. Of course, that's the northeast part of Spain. Here is the beautiful Mediterranean Sea with a lot of palm trees. This beach is massive. It starts from, you can't really see the beginning, it's really far and it ends it ends kind of around here and as you could see the beach is really wide so this is like a real sandy beach and it's very wide from here to there and as you can see there is some uh, volleyball court basketball court and here is soccer a little field i would say because you are in spain soccer is almost a religion here i spent my night in a hotel with a view right at the beach let me show you i was there in the third floor on the side and my view was directly here the mediterranean sea one thing <laughs> i noticed yesterday night when i arrived the hotel is like it was written adult only so they do not accept kids like anyone uh, uh, below 16 years old is not accepted and in front of the hotel there was a sex shop and the price was affordable <laughs> i said Hold on, how come this hotel is too cheap for its location? Because this is where I was sleeping, like that third floor. And the view was directly on the Mediterranean Sea. So I was wondering, like, how come the hotel is affordable? <laughs> Do you need to pay uh, the difference of price uh, <laughs> somehow differently? <laughs> but no, the hotel was perfect. The stay was excellent and they also had breakfast there. Um, was it included? Oops, I lost my map. I need to follow my map. Let me follow my map. Come here, map. <laughs> gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. No, no. Oh. All right, I got back my map. Now I can continue. Go to go in to my video recording. <laughs> Sorry, what I was saying. Uh, I had the breakfast. It was not included in the price of the room, but it was something like uh, six, uh, yeah, six euros for a full breakfast buffet. And now that you have seen the Riviera, we are going to discover the historic center of the city of Gandia. The main uh, word of this road trip, I would say, the main rule of this road trip, is. Uh, to simply avoid big cities <laughs> and go to you know isolated places with you know kind of with less people more uh, more isolated more peaceful with better quality of air with uh, with more affordable uh, uh, housing options with more affordable food options so yeah something more than just the big crowded cities and i love this this is my day number which day is it day five of my road trip in the iberian peninsula and this is palau ducal wow the architecture in spain is amazing wow gandia has seven kilometers of playa that's like more than four miles of pure sandy beach right at the Mediterranean Sea that's amazing I don't know where I should be going but yeah let's go by this side to see the palace all right this is the palace Palau de Cal there's Borja Gandia so these are like the walls of it This is La Entrada. So let's check it out. Let's see how much the ticket is. Hola. How much is the ticket for the, the palace? It's 8 euros. Okay. You can do the tour now with audio guide. The audio guide is included in the price. Okay. And how long it would take to do the tour? It's 14 minutes, more or less. Okay, yeah, that's okay. When? I'll do it here for one. Now I got the, the audio guide. And this is the main courtyard of the palace. 
All right, I'm in the main courtyard of this palace. So this is a palace that is seven centuries old. It's actually from the 14th century and its history dates back to uh, the uh, even the Arab Muslim era. It's this what you see here, this is not the original uh, shape of it. So they reconstructed it, of course. This facade behind me, as you could see, it's less glamorous and decorated than the other one because this part was for the domestics and this part was for the duke here at this part here there was a stable for the horses but it was transformed into a uh, uh, more like a church because it had a lot of owners and in the year 1800 something it was sold into auction because like it it fell in despair and like the owners didn't really didn't really use it at all so it it really became like abandoned and isolated so the the Dutch Christian organization Dutch Polish Bank they renovated a lot of it however the windows you see here these are the original from the 14th century so you could see some kind of moorish influenced style of arches that you see around the windows there and it's amazing like the the, the contrast between this facade and this one because again this one was more for the domestics you could see like a minimum decoration on the facades and the windows and look at you know the facade of this one knowing that yeah this was reconstructed to kind of give it the original vibes of the the 14th 15th century when the duke was living here uh, himself so this palace belonged to one of the kings of spain i think it was king of uh, one of the kings of argon and yeah it's used to be like one of the main uh, uh, residence here So this palace belonged to one of the kings of Spain, I think, was one of the kings of Aragon and uh, it was one of his main uh, residence, but of course it had a lot of owners and he didn't keep its, I would say, glorious, glorious past. So now I'll continue take those stairs and apparently there is a royal hall there that I will discover. Let's see. Oh, there is a well here. So this is one of the main rooms of the palace. So this is Francesco de Borgia from the family of Borgia that owned mostly this uh, palace like for the longest time. Most of the paintings that you see here depicts kind of uh, a certain moment of his life. Like here, for example, they say this is one of the main turning points of his life when that's the death of one of the Qu Queen Elizabeth of Portugal and kind of affected him so much and that's where he kind of decided to turn to turn his life to to God uh, here he got PhD in the university that he founded this one see like he's getting the ceremonial he is like coming to a surgeon I don't remember which city he is building fortification this camera here depicts the so he's laying the foundation for his university of Gandia, which would become the first Jesuit university in the entire world. So, of course, other events there, like that one on the left, the canva on the left. So he's leaving to Rome with his uh, son. Uh, here he's kind of saying goodbye to his family, leaving to Rome with his son. This is his picture. And the tiles are amazing. The tiles here are amazing. It's this is not just some smooth surface. Uh, not sure if I'm allowed to touch it, but if you could see here, you see, it's like engraved in it. It's, this is not like a smooth uh, surface. And there are different, like the patterns here are different from the patterns here. This Moorish architecture, Moorish style for like the doors, the wooden doors. I saw a lot of doors like this in Morocco also. Of 
course chairs and that's the symbol of the crown it's like a double crown you see there that's the symbol of the Borgia family of course the window is beautiful So these are some of the tiles that the, the Jesuits uh, uh, collected and put here on the wall because again a lot of the original uh, tiles were simply lost because the castle was abandoned uh, for like yeah, more than a century and they are just magnificent. What I've been told also is that the, one of the popes, when he discovered this culture of tiles here in this, uh, uh, in this chapel, because there is a chapel here, he even ordered it and um, he decorated part of the Vatican with uh, likewise, uh, uh, I mean, similar uh, uh, tiles. That's, that doesn't, I would say, surprise me because they are just beautiful and they add a lot of colors. Of course, these are more the tiles used for the walls. See, they have a lot of colors like these ones here, and then they differentiate them from the tiles used for the floors that are kind of, you know, more kind of earthy, earthy color, uh, rather than, you know, this one that is like, you know, open bar. They can use a lot of colors, see, like blue, yellow, green. Reminds me a bit also of the Amalfi Coast with the culture of the lemons, and this is the courtyard, guys. So this is the room where supposedly Francesco di Borgia was born, uh, here in this place. And the interesting part is here on the floor. You see that these tiles here are one of the oldest that you can find in the palace. And as you could see, they are quite, they are quite used. So they say they date back to the 15th, 16th century. And I think this is like the little maquette of how the palace was looking like. Welcome to the Eagle Room. In case you are wondering why they named this the Eagle Room, it's because when it was built, they decorated it with a lot of eagles. And with this central ceiling decoration that is made of gold leaves. So therefore, because of these golden eagles they named the room the eagle room i continue enjoying these golden architecture of this spanish palace and the palace is only for me, there is no one here. Oh my god, look at this view. This was a nice palace. Whoever built it, wow, this is the facade. This is the facade I was talking about. That's beautiful. Some mountains here. Yeah, I think this is also part of the castle. Wow, the, the sea is on that, that side. So, friends, what do you think? Uh, I, have a, I have a good dose of, uh, of history, I would say. So now it's time 
to go check out the old town maybe have some something to drink I don't know maybe tea tea and some let's see what they have I'm in the mood of something sweet <laughs> I'm has see like I usually have these conversations that's what's nice about solo trips <laughs> you take the time to discuss with yourself like what do you want to eat so I think I'm in the mood for something sweet and uh, I'll probably go now I need some mountains I need to climb the mountain there are a lot of uh, castles at the top of the mountains let's see if we can find some uh, some nice view but more importantly the rest of the road trip was gonna be our next city I have two options I can I can continue south but since I have to bring the car back to Barcelona so right now I should be at at least four hours and a half uh, drive driving away from Barcelona and I need to bring the car back in uh, in three days actually so I can either continue south or simply come back north or maybe go more inland like near to yeah Madrid or Saragossa and then come back to Barcelona I haven't decided yet uh, so I'll see I'll see what uh, what I'm gonna do yeah maybe Saragossa and then uh, then Barcelona we'll see we'll see otherwise the weather is beautiful the weather is beautiful this is the sky the palm tree is giving me some nice company and some 14th century castle beautifully built historic and that river is really dry so normally here it's supposed to be a river <laughs> at least <laughs> at least that's what Google Maps says <laughs> those blue color I think it stands for water <laughs> but now there is nothing it's dry so if you like the video guys uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, don't forget to, to, to like the video like click on the like button smash it gently touch it however you want to do it as long as it's orange blue I'm happy with it and let's continue this road trip all right friends what do you think about this square to have a tea and probably something sweet to eat I have absolutely no idea what's that <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna figure out let's uh, yeah let's uh, let's sit there let's see some some coffee maybe this is like the city hall yeah yeah Yontament so that's the city hall the city hall of Gandhi yeah. <laughs> this is fancy see I, I love how European cities they take they take a lot the kids in uh, in building everything like yeah in building their societies their model their systems their their whatever they are doing because kids are the foundation of any any tribe right if we consider ourselves tribes Bon Nadal this is cute I think they illuminated during the night yeah the lights should come from there I guess maybe all right guys let's uh, let's go get some tea I just love to be solo I love to do things alone I love to plan the entire thing the road trip the, even the small details like the where I should stop where I should eat where I should go the freedom of being solo and doing everything solo is insane I wouldn't trade it for any anything in the world to be honest I mean at least for now <laughs> I don't know how my life is gonna evolve in the future but yeah for now I just yeah the, the, the benefits of um, of, uh, of solo life are, are insane at least for me so I, I don't want to generalize that on anyone uh, that's, that's this video is <laughs> Is not aimed to tell you like how you should live your life. Ah, I think this is my cake. Perfecto, gracias. Here we go. Here we go. Speaking of solo life. <laughs> Speaking of dulce solo life. <clears throat> so again, I like it so much, but uh, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> See you after.